Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and we're doing another session of what we automate with AutoHotKey. Let me get to here, and let me bump up DPI a bit. So, get my mouse over to the active window. My hotkey is Windows 1, um, it just bumps it up. Much easier than going through those all those steps. Use Prompt Assistant to recently modified files. Let's see how many we got. I'm going to guess over 60. I don't know how many, though. And wow, 124. That that doesn't seem right. Um, probably we just have a lot of libraries or something. So let's get into this. Um, again, we we updated ours to use a scintilla control. So now I can um, CTR. That's client work. Um, Isaiah's been doing a lot of stuff with our a couple different radiologist clients, helping them automate PowerScribe, and and they have very different approaches. It's kind of fascinating to see the two different approaches, and one of them likes one approach, and the other one likes the other, and so of course we customize it to what they want, which is that's the beauty of AutoHotKey, right? We customize programs and adapt them to how you think, which is really cool. So that's what we're doing there. Um, actually, WinPix this was with another client. Uh, we did some interesting stuff for him, helping him automate some of his. Uh, um, some sort of fantasy football or something, I think, guess, uh, picks. We did some work for another client work stuff. All these, these are all client work. Obviously, they're in the client work folder. Uh, Scott, uh, we have a weekly call with him. Irfan does a weekly call with him. And uh, he had us do a couple of things for him, so that's there. I don't know, actually. I've been traveling and just having a time to see what they've been up to, but I'm interested to see. I just have been busy. Um, sample codes. Sample codes. I have no idea what this is. I really don't know. Um, splits. Oh, this is the splitter. Let me see if I can actually run this. In the hero call, um, Irfan was playing with this. What? There we go. Uh, this, this I don't know the concert current condition of this, but he was demonstrating how the splitter can be used. We were working with GUIs, um, and that was one that we should have recorded it because Deus was teaching... Irfan about doing some of those splitters to where they don't flicker when they're, they're moving. And so that was just an example from that. Let me make sure I exit out of that. Otherwise, I'll end up with a bunch of... Oh, looks like it did when I closed it. Good. That's what it should be. This file explorer, well, it's not quite ready, but um, Irfan's been working on it. And Wow, that's, that's nice and clear. So I'll pick C drive. Let's go with my S drive. That's the one we're looking at over there. And yeah, this one... We never shared this one. It's going to open in a preview. And, and this, I don't know if he's done this part, but when you there, and I'm going to close it. Now, if I go open another file, it should remember. No, it hasn't done that yet. It should remember what it does, but notice the scintilla highlighting. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if I just switch to a different file, um, it'll update it. And even if I knew where, oh, you know, we should have as a way to enter your path. Because that, I often know the paths of things. And I like to be able to do that. So the um, S drive. Let's see, newsletter, creative, uh, eight, this is one traveling sucks. So here, it notice that even it has scintilla highlighting for HTML, we're gonna add other things like Python, JavaScript, um, and, and we have like over 80 languages, but uh, for just the coloring. Now, you can come in here and copy and paste and you can move this around, right? Uh, but and again, what, this should remember, which he hasn't just added that yet. But you get the idea, right? It's going to be very cool to... And then you can add your own. You can give it your own words, and it'll highlight those if you want to on your file. So that's what that one is. Um, this is Explorer. Uh, oh, and look, here's the CJSON. This is one I could have um, also highlighted, I think. Uh, file Explorer. So these are all being used with the File Explorer. Here's just, oh, just untitled. Always on top. Here's one. And it, the code is really simple. Right? Oh, man. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, he's adding the triggers, our triggers class, which we're converting more into a preference center. It allows you to add hotkeys or hot strings or um, there's one mouse clicks. And so the always on top, um, it's pretty cool because it's so easy and auto hotkey to do that. Um, the code is really nothing. And so it's going to, um, also we're going to have it as a preference that you can say, hey, update the, the window title. So you can go to any program you're in, hit a hotkey that you've designated, and it will make that window always on top until you toggle it again or close the program. This is very easy without a hotkey, so we're going to make a simple download. Uh, but it's most people don't, you know, a lot of people don't use auto hotkey, so we'll make it in a compiled version as well. Because this is one I think a lot of people, if they had that handy, they would use it a lot. 
So that's that. Oh, there's another always on top example. Not sure what he's doing there. Claude test. So we were working with the Claude API and what we're, because Claude currently right now, the only one that dumps out good V2 code is Claude. Uh, and it, Claude is definitely smarter right now than ChatGPT. Uh, I think that'll, you know, flip back and forth a lot, but uh, we, we want to use that for our AI tool, talk to AI. So it, because we do a lot of hockey stuff, it's really important to me that we have the ability to give the text to our prompt to Claude because it'll work better. We're also doing well with the OCR. Um, I have no idea. I would try to run this, but I have no idea. It looks like it looks at a picture and does OCR on it. That gets submitted to OpenAI, ChatGPT. Yeah, we're, by the way, oh, he didn't start it, but I was, um, talked to Isaiah today. Hey, we're going to update the window snipping tool. Isaiah, by the way, updated our window snipping V1 version, which is this one. I can go like this and take a little snippet. Now, actually, it's a great example because notice how that's off, right? It wasn't, um, let me do it somewhere. It's a little more obvious. I can close that and do this here. Now, because the DPI is on, when I let go, it's act a little, it, it kind of, just and that's because of the dpi well we have found a way to do a better job with that and so isaiah's updated the dpi in v1 however and now we've pushed that apparently he said today he's shared that on our downloads uh, but what we're gonna do is i was gonna add the ocr using ChatGPT to the window snipping tool because we already have ocr built into it like let me see if i think if it's uh these two oh it's gonna open outlook sorry that's the wrong one I obviously use the OCR a lot. And notice it, it does some weird thing with the line breaks, but it does a pretty good job. Well, instead of that uses the Windows 10 OCR, we're gonna be submitting it to ChatGPT and use that OCR because it does a better job, especially with complex things like this, because there's really kind of two tables here. And what um, what we decided with Zayas is instead of updating, because our ChatGPT class, which you can download, I'll put the link up here, um, is for V2, this window snipping tool V1, we can't, we'd have to redo it in V1, which we're not definitely not doing because we don't do anything in V1 anymore. But we're going to recreate the window snipping tool in V2 because we have all the pieces. And so he doesn't think it'll be too hard to put it together. So we're going to be working on that um, pretty soon. Also, automate my task is AS updated that to take into account the DPI, which is great, because that was another one that didn't quite work right with the different DPI scales on different monitors. So we've updated that. And this just, I'm gonna jump to the same topic. It's this blur. So blurring your page, if you've already purchased that from us, that's a paid for script, but it also um, now will adjust to the different DPIs on the different monitors. So um, yeah, actually those are all related. So clip share, apparently there were some weird things going on with that. We, again, this is a private script. We haven't shared that, but it allows us to share our clipboards between my computer and like Isaiah's is or Irfan's computer. Uh, we also can message each other, so that's pretty cool. Um, this create drive, I know I need to make a video on that. I thought I did when I was gone, but um, I didn't have OBS with me at my dad's computer, but um, you, you can create fake drives and access files and folders lo like they're locally and it's, it's well, they're all local, but it'll, um, you don't have to navigate nearly as far, which is really, really convenient. We have lots of tools with FFmpeg that um, hopefully this next week, uh, we should be able to launch those and get them out there. Those are all gonna be like $5.99. Oh, hey, I had a sale. Um, those are all gonna be like $5.99, but they're um, really cool tools that wrap FFmpeg and do a lot of cool stuff. Oh, here's the Talk to AI. That's one of them. And actually, um, that was another one Irfan is working on. Yesterday morning, Isaias and I sat here because Thomas, a hero member, said, hey, he, he loves the tool. However, when you hit the hotkey and it start, it's supposed to start recording when you hit the hotkey. So when you hit the hotkey, it's supposed to start recording right then. However, because FFmpeg takes a little bit like about a second or so uh, to spin up and start recording, you'd miss that first second of you talking, which can be very annoying. So Thomas actually had seen my um, base DLL video I did years ago with V1 to record audio and uh, he suggested using that because it'd probably be instantaneous and so we thought about it however I said but before we switch over because we've already got this thing working what if we spun up FFmpeg when um, automatically when it starts and then suspend it right before you um, it starts to record so basically you tell it to record but you suspend it right when you tell it to record and it just sits there in memory but it's not being active then when you hit the hotkey, it activates, it 
it makes it where it's not suspended and it's it's running and then when you let go it ends it ends the recording and then spins itself back up and sets itself into suspend mode again and so um i had a a, a hope it would work and boy as Ace and i we tested it, it took us about 20 minutes but we tested it we're like wow it was working great so it's um we're going to be switching to that so that'll be um hopefully this tool will be updated where we don't have that half a second to a second depending on your system delay time so that's all there um Irfan hopefully should we get to that next week the transcribe video I'm not sure what we were doing different oh oh i know we were we're creating a summary version for our hero call which i have to go and summarize the hero calls we had three hours every week and i right now i load them into youtube and then i use an ai tool in youtube and that's like 10 bucks a month or maybe it's six somewhere in there but it's not free and um it will summarize the video and it returns back text that we then put into a tool to give it the um eight to get html that we put on the automator but the plain text we put into the description of the video and so our tool isn't doing as good of a job as the tool i'm paying for which is good that means our other tool i'm paying for is we're paying for it for a reason but we're making our tool once we launch once we have it where we can share i'll explain more about the details of what we've done to make it better uh, but it, it should be pretty cool. So that's what that script is. These are all transcribed video. We're just playing with that, doing different stuff. The file meta. This is a great one. Um, I don't think I've released this video yet, but we borrowed the FileX Pro, which is why it's in that folder called FileX Pro, but we changed the name to File Metadata Retriever because that's what you're doing. And you give it a path to a file and you can get up to like 1,300 different properties. And scan if i remember right wrote the v1 version and he did a great job but it was really cumbersome to use you really had to know what you were doing and had to do a lot of stuff we changed this to where you you launch the thing you have a gui which the other tool didn't have you drag a file into it and then it will basically look at the extension and then say hey for that file here are the properties it gets all the ones that only shows you out of the 1300 only shows you the ones that are valid um, and then you can get the syntax to get each property so we'll be making a video on that sometime this week i think no actually Zayson already made the video when i was in vegas i just need to edit it I've just been busy but it's a very cool tool that um it's 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 really helpful if you're trying to get certain attributes that aren't um common suck it oh i'm not sure what's going on with that let's hit continue why that's weird i don't know why and maybe i'm not going to click on that one i think i'd have the same issue although they're v1 and i know this is a v2 script so that's that's interesting uh run command uh, i'm not sure what we're doing with this it's a v1 also i think we were adjusting it to v2 but i'm not sure on that um we we put a bunch of stuff for isaiah to look at we're isaiah a couple weeks ago we made a video on how to document your functions and classes uh so in vs code they auto assist you the types of parameters you might have and so rizwan's been going through and doing that on not just our scripts but other people's too because it really makes it so much easier to program so um that's what we we had we downloaded a bunch of interesting ones and we asked um isaiah to say which ones of these are really helpful you know that we should share or and fix so we're spending the time to adjust the code. We're not changing the code other than adding documentation. So um, he, I think he looked at them, and most of them we, we decided they were worth doing, but I don't think all of them were. Uh, the ACC library, uh, CJSON. The, oh, that's why we have so many also. That's why there's 124 files that were edited. We Because Rizwan was doing that on a lot of our other scripts and everything, just updating the documentation, which is far easier than writing a new script. Right. Um, I don't know what I this V two uh, is that with the JSON. Um, I'm not sure what was being done with this. I'll have to ask what we were doing with all those. Let's see here. Um, and again, that could have just been Rizwan going through. He's also going through and confirming every one of these folders we have a file a, a Dropbox folder for in our S drive usually they have a script in there or in a subfolder and make sure we have them as downloads because a lot of times we create the stuff and then we forget to share them to put them online and stuff and so Rizwan's going through and documenting all that for us which is you know it's a lifesaver because it just it's tedious and um it's not easy to quickly say okay well which ones do you have but are they on your website like that's 
boy, that even with AI right now, that wouldn't be very easy. Uh, so pause, device change. I don't, I don't know. These are all. I think that's what these are. Just a lot of the stuff that um we have examples we downloaded. That's what all these are. These are V2 libraries that we were like, hey, these sound interesting. So yeah, I'm just gonna brush over those. Maybe at some point when we go back into them, we'll find that they're interesting and I'll make some videos on them, right? But right now I'm just not knowledgeable of them because Rizwan was just updating them in documentation. Uh, da, da, da. Here's the JSON library. Our, our trigger preferences class. We changed it to name preferences because I forget exactly why, but we were making it where it's not just hot strings, hot keys, and mouse clicks. We were adding something else, and I forget what it was. Maybe it was like an edit field um, where you might want to have a drop down or edit field. We're making those available in there. So we decided to change it to preferences, and uh, Irfan was doing some work on that. The scintilla control during the hero call, Irfan gave a nice example. We have these on our website now, and um, I'll put the link up here if you want to grab it. Uh, for doing simple examples with scintilla in v2 so um, it's nice look at that nice highlighting like that's what you can can get if you you know care to to give it um keywords to look for to spot so it's very cool shin's image scan that one that's another one we were checking to see if it need i think that one was already no that one might have already been documented i can't remember if it was his or descalada with the uia and acc libraries but um, that, that's why we had those and we were updating them. The socket, recently modified. That's this script that we're running right now. And yeah, we're like I said, we're updating the Windows scripting, uh, snipping tool, which is by far our number one download. It's a great tool, that one I was showing you earlier, uh, but it's a V1 script and we're, it's our number one script and we don't use V1 anymore. And, and like I said, we want to add the OCR for AI and um, I was I'm like let's not add it to there let's create the v2 version of it so hopefully that'll be out in probably in a couple weeks because it still might take us some time as I has been doing a lot of client work speaking of which we do client work done for you stuff so if you you know want us to either review code you already have and optimize it or help tutor you on it it's another thing we do uh, or just tell us what you want to get done and just you know what we usually typically do is join a zoom call get an idea of what it is and then Hopefully we don't have to do it on your computer. If we can do it remotely, you know, then it's it's easier. But um, yeah, we, we help people work smarter, not harder. So hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day. Cheers.